My name is Jacob Mushokwa and today I'll be doing the duty as your MC and giving you all the information you need to know. As this is a virtual event, things will be a little different today. Catering will be provided by your fridge. The bathroom facilities are exactly where you left them. Today's event is strictly non-smoking. Should there be a fire in your home, please inform the fire of the rules and you will be safe. Lastly, please note that if you have any questions, there is a chat on the side where we will help you, give you prizes if you're lucky, or roast you if you ask really silly questions. Let's get to the serious stuff now. I know it's hard sitting behind your screen watching this unfold without the perks of an in-person launch like food, coffees, and test drives. Please note that cameras are on and all the best moves will be posted to our social media. <laughs> Time for us to have a few words from Hyundai's Sales Operations Director, Stanley Anderson. Please pay attention. It is time to learn what the Hyundai Kona has to offer in terms of details and landscape. Mr. Anderson, the eyes are all yours. How are you, sir? Good and you, Jacob. I'm good. Thank you for asking. It's so funny when I see Hyundai Kona in 2018. I remember seeing that and then I'm seeing it again now in 2021. And I'm thinking, hey, is this, is this a new car? What's, what's the story here? So it's an, an improved uh, uh, improvement on the model we launched in 2018. Uh, Hyundai calls it the product enhancement. Some of our competitors call it facelifts, but I believe a facelift is something you do when you hit your midlife crisis. So <laughs> we'll keep to enhancement for our product. Um, so normally when you launch two and a half, three years into the cycle, you have a, an enhancement and hopefully in, in three years time, we'll launch an all new model. Okay, so a very wise man once told me that you don't go fishing where there aren't any fish. That's the case with the jam-packed crossover SUV segment with it leading the sales categories locally. That's right, folks, we're winning, and we're winning where it matters. Now, Stanley knows so much more on this, so please take it away, sir. You're right, uh, Jacob, it's, it's very crowded. Uh, the segment is massive. Uh, if you put it into relation with uh, the the passenger car market, it's 45% this year so far. It's a lot. on crossovers, nearly half. I reckon by end of the year, we'll be at 50% of the market uh, in the SUV and crossover segment. So it's always good to launch either a new model or enhancement into a, a large segment that will give you volume potential for the new model. And we know we're going to do a lot better than the previous one. We sold with the previous model uh, from 2018 till now, 1,700 units. So uh, those are all on the road if they haven't been written off in accidents. And the warranty burn rate on, on that car park is only 41 rand a month. Warranty burn rate, 41 rand a month. Uh, please explain this, Matt. I've never heard that term before. Okay, it's very low. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to warranty burn rate. So we take the, the value of warranty claims we submit to Korea because our seven-year warranty is, is a fully backed by Hyundai Motor Company Korea, divided by the number of vehicles in the warranty car park, where there's models or a total car park, and that averaged out only 41 rand per month on the ah. Kona. And you put that into dollars, you know, it's two and a half dollars a month. 41 uh, rand is nothing. It's nothing, absolutely nothing. It just shows you how reliable this vehicle is. Okay, all right, this kind of makes sense. So the SUV and crossover segment has contributed nearly a third of all vehicle sales in the last two years alone. The variance between 2020 and 2021 was down over 20,000 units, but Hyundai still managed to achieve a 2.1% growth in market share. I look forward to hearing more about the newly enhanced Kona. We cannot wait to see it grow and outperform its predecessor. So here's Stanley with all the reasons why. 
So new Kona in size wise is slightly longer, 40 millimeters longer for the executive and the end line is 50 millimeters longer. The width is the same as, as the uh, previous model and the, the height also, but the ground clearance on the end line is eight millimeters higher than the previous model. Some additional specifications we've added. Um, it's always part of an enhancement to put extra spec in for the customers. Uh, climate control is now standard, so your automatic air conditioner, not manual. You can actually set the actual temperature to 21 degrees or whatever you want it at and, it, and the vehicle will adjust it till 21 and keep it there. Uh, the two-tone, we've got two-tone uh, paint option on, on the exact and the, the end line. So you can have the body color with the black roof two-tone on both of those, which we didn't have previously. Leather seats is now full leather seats versus the cloth leather combination on the previous model and also wireless charging uh, is now a standard feature, which we didn't have previously. Yo, with numbers like that, the new Kona will be selling faster than hot chocolate and coffee on a cold winter's day. These days, everything comes down to simple things like price. Even in that department, the new Kona is winning as the entire line won't leave a hole in your pocket with a two liter petrol starting at under 450,000 Rand. The best of the bunch has to be the N-Line TGDI with its bespoke 18 inch alloys, leather interior and dashing two tone paint job. This is definitely the model for those who want to turn heads as fast as they can turn corners. Tell us about the launch lineup, Stanley. So we've extended from two derivatives in the previous model to three for, for the enhancement model. Uh, the Kona 2 liter executive auto starts at 449,000. The Kona 1.6 turbo exec auto at 499,900. And then the end line, which we mentioned, uh, you know, even you will turn heads with this car. I mean, it's amazing looking. <laughs> Thank you, Stan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with this DZT transmission, it's 579,900. Wow, those prices are actually very reasonable. For most people, a car is a thing they fill up with petrol that moves from one place to another. But have you ever stopped and thought, how does it actually do that? And what exactly makes it move? So Stanley, I want to bring you in here. Tell us about the drivetrain options on the Kona. We're launching with three derivatives in the new lineup. Uh, Entry-level 2-liter executive auto, 110 kilowatt, 179 newton meters. That engine is paired with an eight-speed IVT, intelligent variable timing transmission, beautiful pairing, smooth gear changes. You hardly feel the gear changes. Fuel economy is great. Then we have a 1.6 turbo paired with a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission, transmission, and that engine puts out 146 kilowatt and 265 newton meters. Hmm. This IVT sounds very interesting. I actually can't wait to get behind the wheel of the new Kona. Now the crossover SUV segment has a new top dog when it comes to style meeting performance, and her name is Kona. Stanley, tell us a little more about the styling and specifications of the new Kona. So the biggest change in styling on the executive spec is, is probably the front uh, styling. They've, they've made the, the grill a lot wider, a lot flatter. It's like it's got a broad smile now, yeah. you know, because you're going to smile when you drive it. Yeah, it's a very welcoming yeah. facial feature to it. Yes, yeah. they, but well, they say uh, the, the front of a vehicle should look like a, a face, you know, ah. a human face. So you've got the eyes, the mouth, uh, etc. So that is, this looks very much like a face. I have to smiling. agree. I have to agree. So you have the split headlights, which is carried over from the previous model. So the top thin line uh, is the daytime running lights and your indicator when you indicate that changes to orange, obviously when you, when you indicate. The bumper has also got uh, quite an aggressive change uh, in a light gray color and more prominent than the previous model. The rear, not much change. The biggest change there is the rear bumper. Um, wider, also a different color, a little light gray, and the, the lights are very similar design to, to the previous model. So, so from the side, there's not much change uh, because with the product enhancement, they don't change body panels. Uh -huh. They change the soft parts, which is your bumpers, you know, the lights that's easier to change. Um, the main, main difference here is the, the new style, the, uh, styled wheels okay. that features on the new model. And there's three different styles of that. On the two liter, 1.6 uh, turbo exec has got its own 18 inch design. And then the inline has got its uh, uh, specific design for, for that model. So it seems as though I already like the design of the inline alloys. That's my personal favorite. I just had to put it out there. Now we've spoken about the exterior of the car. Let's talk about the interior, Stanley. 
So some of the comfort features uh, that we have in the new model is the 8-inch infotainment system with wireless CarPlay and Android Auto, which means you don't have to have it linked by, with a cable. You can get in the car. If you've paired your phone, it will automatically connect to your infotainment system. You know, so there's no phone exposed next to you lying in the open. Uh, you can have it on the on the wireless charger while you're using the phone and, and using Waze or your music. Um, so that is a really neat feature. Multifunction steering wheel. Everything you need to control in the vehicle is on the steering wheel. So you don't never have to leave, your hands never have to leave the steering wheel. You know, from cruise control to your audio controls to your phone phone controls. Even if you get a, a WhatsApp message and your phone is linked to your infotainment system, you can just press on the uh, on the answer button and it will read the message to you. You can answer with verbally, and it will send a text to the person that sent you the message. Hmm. So again, you know, safety uh, first and foremost. So that's why everything is within arm reach, or you actually don't have to leave the, the steering wheel uh, while driving. Uh, the climate control is also a new feature, as we mentioned a bit earlier. Uh, also rear park assist with rear view camera. So you've got the sensors in the bumper that gives you an audible warning if you're close to anything when you're reversing, but you also have the picture and you can find, uh, follow the guidelines as you reverse in and it works perfectly. And of course, if there's any obstructions there, then the beep, 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 beep will be happening. 100% and or you'll see it in your, in your uh, rear view camera. Of course. Um, wireless charger we've, we've spoken about, but you've also got USB ports and, and charger in the front if you want to charge other devices uh, that you obviously you can only charge one phone at a time on the wireless charging. Your rear seats is a 60-40 split configuration. It's also got three three-pointed safety belts. So even your middle passenger in the rear will have the safety of a three-pointed safety belt, not just a lap belt, which I think is, is, is very important these, these days uh, as far as safety is concerned. And then you can fold the seats, either the full seat or just 40% or 60%, depending on what you want to load in the, in the boot space. Uh, High-mounted brake light from the rear, also a safety feature. If you're in traffic, you slam on the brakes, very visible for the driver behind you, and hopefully they'll react in time. Uh, also, Isofix attachments for baby seats. You know, this our previous model sold very well with our, our female customers, and a lot of them have small kids, and then you can at least have your baby safe in, in, the, in the baby seat in the rear. Yeah, so the Isofix thing is always a, a main point or a main seller for a lot of people. So I can understand why um, the Isofix is a, an important factor in the Kona. Always keep the kids strapped in, I guess. That's what it boils down to. Now, Stanley, we've spoken about all the other derivatives except the main one, the N line. Any petrol head, when they see N on a Hyundai, they've got questions. And now I got questions. Can you take me through the inline version of the new Kona? So Hyundai's product strategy is to start with the base model, then you have the N line, and then you have full N. So N is our performance brand. So the base model will feature certain drivetrains, which will, which will be carried over to the N line, but the N line will have different styling cues and styling enhancements yeah. versus your base model. So you'll definitely see the difference on the road when the two cars are parked next to each other. And then the full N is like the i30N we launched beginning of last year. The powerful the i30N. Powerful, yeah. it's, it's track ready, it's race ready. Uh, we have a couple of customers actually racing them on the track uh, and the warranty is still valid, which is a very good point. <laughs> they don't void warranty on track days. Okay, this is good. <laughs> uh, so that's where your inline, inline fits in. Okay. Same transmission drivetrain, but very different looking. So if you look at the front styling of the inline versus the executive, a lot more aggressive. You know, you know when it's approaching you on the road. From the rear, not too much different. The, bu the bumper and also the, the dual exhaust is visible on the end line, but which is not on the executive. And from the side, they, the wheel arches are body color. They're not black. So the executive, the black arches and the end line is body color. So it looks sleeker, uh, more refined versus your executive uh, models. You can obviously easily tell it apart from the rest of the others. The inline just looks slick. I think that's the word for it. So that, that covers the exterior. But when you get into the inline, it's very prevalent. You've got the N logo on your steering wheel. You've got it on the gear lever. It's embroidered on your, your seats as well. So it's very clear that you're now in an inline Kona. 
Additional features that we've included in the N-Line that we don't have in the executive, things like the push button start. You don't need the key to start your car. You get in, press a button, car starts. Uh, supervision cluster, very funky cluster. It changes color depending on which drive mode you're in. So in eco, it will be green. In smart, it will be blue. And in sport, it will be red. So it depends what mood you're in, how fast you want to accelerate. Put it in sport or keep it in smart. And when you accelerate quick, it will actually adapt the sport mode. So that's why it's called smart. You know, it, oh. knows what to, it knows what to pick depending on your driving style. Um, looking at you, it's probably just be red all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the compliments, <laughs> <laughs> Another very good feature on the end line is the smart cruise control. You know, when you're traveling on the highways, traffic tends to back up quite quickly. So you set the distance you want to follow the vehicle in front of you. Anything, anything between 25 and 53 meters are the settings. There's four different settings. The problem with 50 meters is, you know, our drivers on the road, they take a gap like Jesse Krill and, you know, you'll end up going backwards. So 25 meters is probably the right distance to set your cruise control at. And when the traffic slows down, your vehicle will automatically slow down and again, gather speed when, when the vehicles move to the left or, or they speed up in front of you. The other safety feature, forward collusion avoidance. This is uh, obviously in conjunction with your smart cruise control. Um, when, when there's a sudden uh, reduction in speed of vehicles in front of you, you get a forward collusion warning. It actually flashes on your, on your cluster. And if it's set at active assist on your, uh, on your settings, it will apply brakes, even if you're not applying brakes. Mm. So it will avoid you from, from uh, basically getting into an accident. Um, this only works if you're driving faster than 60 kilometers an hour. So the key is to always have active assist on, just for safety purposes. I would, I would definitely recommend that. There's no, there's no question. Then the other, other features, lane keep assist, lane following assist. So there's a camera just in front of your, your rear view mirror. It, it actually checks where the, the lines are, the markings on the road, and it will make sure that your vehicle stays in the lane. If you do tend to veer off a bit, you'll get a warning, an audible warning, and it will push the steering wheel back into the lane. You can sort of loosely let go of the steering wheel and it will follow the lane. Not recommended, obviously. And as soon as you, your hands are off, it will tell you to put your hands back on the steering wheel. Okay. Uh, it's so not it's not an quite, autonomous car. It's not quite self-driving <laughs> yet. F uh, a further safety feature is safe exit assist, especially when you have kids in the rear seats and they, when you stop, they want to jump out. If there's a, a vehicle approaching, and it's, it's obviously causing a danger for the kids to get out, the, the door won't open. And that works in, in, in conjunction with your blind spot collision avoidance, which obviously you use while you're driving on the highway as well. There's two sensors on the corners of the rear bumper. It monitors that blind spot. If the vehicle's in there, it will light up uh, a light in your rear view or side mirrors, as well as an as a audible warning if you do decide to turn into that lane and it will uh, stop you from turning into that lane and causing an accident. Stan mentioned earlier that the crossover SUV market has more choices than a great buffet. But the question we all need to know is where does the Kona rank when put against its current competition? Stanley, how does the Kona stack up against its competitors? So we see our main competitors as the Volkswagen T-Roc, Mazda CX-30, the Audi Q2 and the Mini. Uh, whether it's a countryman or normal mini. They all, I think, niche products in their own right. You know, they're different. there's different uh, styling cues on them. The Kona customer is somebody that wants to drive something that looks different. Yeah. And the Kona does look different to a lot of our other models. And that's what attracts them to our, our showroom floor. Now, when the customer does their homework, obviously they look at engine and power. So in terms of engines, our two liter, uh, puts out 110 kilowatt, 179 newton meters. You know, that's in line with your Audi Q2 at 110 kilowatt. Uh, the Mini Cooper actually only puts out 100 kilowatt, your CX30 at 121 kilowatt. So the T-Rock has two engines, uh, 1.4 turbo and a two liter turbo. Our two liter turbo at 146 kilowatt is actually six kilowatt more than the T-Rock. And the 1.4 turbo is 110 kilowatt. So in terms of performance, this is nothing we have to stand back for. Um, so that's performance. You're driving a car, great performance. So how do we look after you in terms of after sales? Mm -hmm. So warranty, we've mentioned, it's worth mentioning again, our seven year 200,000 market leading warranty. You know, our competitors there, three year 120 on the VW, three year unlimited 
on the Mazda, uh, one year unlimited on the Audi, uh, and a two year unlimited on the Mini. So, you know, people say, oh, three year unlimited, but your average mileage you drive is probably 20,000 a year. So it's really a three year 60,000 warranty, you know, where we've extended the, the time to seven years, 200,000. Also, our service plan, five year 75 is standard. Um, that covers you for service items every time you take in for a car. And the, the beauty of that is, you know, for five years, your services, if you drive your 15, 20,000 a year, it's either 15,000 kilometers or, or annual service. So that's why we have a five year 75. The T Rock is five year 90. Again, the Mazda 3 Unlimited. And then there's a maintenance plan on the Audi and the Mini of five year 100,000 kilometers. Just looking at specific uh, specification comparisons to, to some of our direct competitors versus a two-liter executive auto. You know, you have, you have your Mazda CX-30 at 469, so it's, it's 19,000 and more a retail price. Your T-Rock at uh, the 1.4 turbo at 489, so also more expensive than our two-liter. Uh, the Mazda only has a manual aircon, no parking sensors, no rear park camera. Uh, even the T-Rock doesn't feature a rear park camera. In, in this derivative. Daytime running lights not available on your Mazda, nor leather seats, either the Mazda or the T-Rock. So if you have to put that, those specification as optional into, into a, a, a monetary value, you know, you can probably add 15, 20,000 Rand on top of those retail prices that they list um, in, the, in the car magazine. 1.6 turbo executive, obviously our, our sort of uh, performance model, but not, not quite in terms of styling where, where our end line is. Uh, at 499, you've got the T Rock 1.4 TSI at 489 and the CX30 at 499. Again, some specifications we've got climate control, Mazda, manual aircon, uh, parking camera again on ours, not on the competitors. Uh, daytime running lights aren't on the Mazda and leather seats on, on neither of those competitors. So, you know, value for money, our, our, our philosophy in terms of our product lineup and the specifications, you get what, what you see mm. and what you pay for is what you see. There's no optional extras or surprises when you come to our showroom floor and said, okay, no, leather is optional. You know, this car's got leather, but you've got to pay extra for it. Sunroof, yeah. 20 grand. <laughs> yeah, customers don't like those surprises. Yeah. And I think that's one of our, our, our selling points in terms of our, our whole range of vehicles. Uh, the end line, um, smart cruise control, yeah, definitely differentiates us from, from the competitors. You know, we had 579, the Audi is at 581, um, there's a Mini at 576, the, the, the uh, T-Rock here is at 589. So all similar ballpark when it comes to pricing, but parking camera, um, the safety features that we mentioned on N-Line, that safety pack with the pre-collusion warning, the lane departure, um, the leather seats, it's, it's standard on our vehicle where it's not a, a feature or a standard feature on these competitors. And that's really what sets us apart from, from, from our competitors, value for money. What you see is what you pay for. And that's why we'll sell lots of these Konas. Yeah, there we go. What you see is what you pay for. There you have it. Proof you need that the Kona has beaten the competition in so many ways that if we had to mention them all, we would be here for weeks. So thank you so much for that, Stanley. Really appreciate it. There are so many points from Stanley's presentation that I could highlight. But if I did, this launch would turn from an episode into a proper mini-series. Now, I want to ask you something, Stanley. My first question. You spoke about the inline having smart cruise control. Um, the smart cruise control, is it available to spec on, for instance, the 1.6 Executive? Or is it only exclusive to the inline Kona? It's only exclusive to the inline Kona, and that includes obviously the whole safety package. You know, so for that difference in price, uh, 79,000 Rand, I think you get a lot of value for your money if you look at the additional specifications plus the styling differences. So, you know, don't be a miser, pay the extra money and buy the inline. Take out the money. <laughs> okay, so another question that's come in Does the new Kona have an electronic stability program? Absolutely, across all three derivatives, standard. Okay. Will we see the hybrid or full electronic Kona derivatives in the range in South Africa in the foreseeable future? I know that's a bit of a tricky question. 
Yeah, not not in. I don't think in in the foreseeable future. Uh, they, these models are available globally. Hyundai has got full electric. They've got hybrid, plug-in hybrid. But you know, I don't think our country is quite ready. Uh, the cost of these vehicles are also a lot more than your your normal Konas, like we're launching now. And and I don't think customers are not prepared to pay a two or three hundred thousand rand premium, you know, for an electric car or a, or a hybrid. Okay, let's talk about the lineup of uh, Hyundai when it comes to their SUVs. Uh, Creta, uh, Venue, and now Kona. Where does the Kona exactly fit in uh, amongst the group or the family of SUVs? So we have the, the Venue, Creta, Tucson, and, and those we call SUVs. Kona is classified as a crossover. So the big difference really between SUV and crossover is your, your uh, ride height. You know, your crossover is lower, SUV's got higher ground clearance. That's the easiest way to, you know, di differentiate between a crossover and SUV. So Kona fits in between Creta and Tucson. Okay. So you have obviously very different styling, as we've mentioned. Uh, you have uh, a vehicle that's lower in, in, in ride height, but a better specification than your Creta. And it's sort of in comparison with your top line Tucson. But, uh, you know, a customer will walk in on a Kona, you'll see the, the, the Kona on TV, on, a, on an ad, great styling, get excited, walk in and say, okay, it's not quite what I need, it's a bit small, then you sell them in Tucson. So that's the, the beauty, you know, you need this car to, to create showroom traffic and we'll sell more SUVs uh, from those walk-ins. Okay, so I think with all of the information that we've been sharing and the N that we've been talking about, uh, the other question is, will we see the Kona N with its performance engine in the local range? You you will, we're planning to what? launch. Did you say yes, there's an N <laughs> yes, range coming? Yes, Okay. so by the N line now, you can trade it in, the, in on the N early next year. We're gonna launch first quarter next year with the full N. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. I think all the all the people who like a bit of punch in a in an SUV like this are going to enjoy this car, in a cross SUV. They're going to enjoy this. Yeah, I, I think so. There's definitely a space in the market. And that will also feature eight-speed uh, DCT transmission. Currently, our i30N is only in a six-speed manual, but we'll have the eight-speed DCT in the Kona N. Okay, so Stanley, information overload. There's a lot of information that we're telling people about and there's a lot of things that we've been exchanging right now talking about the Kona. Where can we access all of this information and the pictures, etc.? So Dion, our, our communications manager, will post it on QuickPick. Uh, most of our audience have access to QuickPick, so they can go in there and there'll be a detailed presentation loaded on QuickPick for them to produce at their own time. Stanley, thank you so much for your time. I think with that said, it's time for us to wrap up this virtual launch of the Kona. It's been an absolute pleasure. Can I call you Prastan now? Bra Jacob, no problem. Ah, oh, there we go. Bluetooth high five, brother. Thank you so much. Our dealerships are open and whether you're looking to book the test drive that will seal the deal or pick the color of your new baby, all you need to do is call and your dream will become a reality. Thank you so much for taking time to enjoy the launch of the enhanced Hyundai Kona with us and wishing you safe travels wherever you may go. And we know they will be happy and safe travels if they're in the new Kona, of course. From me, Jacob Mushokwa, take care and goodbye.